gives you an opportunity for getting a livelihood and converting your education skills you know your education into employable skills that's the power of mahika hello everyone i'm anupama ramteke from the founding team of mahika and today it gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to one of our key board members she's strong she's powerful but moreover she's empathetic towards our cause of transforming the lives of women in this country she completed her ba honors in economics from delhi university's lady shriram college and her ma from delhi school of economics in 1971 she joined lsr as a lecturer in 1971 and left to join rbi in 1972 as a probationary officer In 2005 she was appointed as the deputy governor of RBI a post she held for 5 years As deputy governor she is considered one of the primary figures in the central banking of India due to her stance on promoting financial inclusion and represented RBI on the board of National Bank for Rural Development In 2014 she chaired an expert group set up by the ministry of rural development setting up a developmental financial institution for women self help groups she is very active in the not for profit sector she is a trustee of the indian cancer society and heads its cancer cure fund she chairs the lotus medical foundation in kolhapur which works on hiv aids issues as the chairman of the board of governors of the foundation for ecological security she takes keen interest in ecology and sustainable development by the way she loves gardening and bird watching today it is a matter of pride and honor to have her on our advisory board she is an active board member takes keen interest in advising us on social as well as business matters Her passion for developing women, especially from the rural background, is truly admirable. I had the opportunity to interview her and understand as to what really excites her to be a part of Mahika. I am talking about none other than Madam Usha Thorat, former Deputy Governor of RBI. Mahika, as I see it, is focused on getting more women into employment. the focus on women's employment is what excites me the most about it according to the data released by the world bank in june 2020 india's female labor force participation ratio what we call the flfp dropped from 30% in 1990 to 20% in 2020 falling behind pakistan and afghanistan which were at 22% and 21.8% respect and it's much better in sri lanka bangladesh and many other countries uh, you know which we consider to be either worse than india or at the same level so while the men's uh, labor participation rate slightly decreased over time it is four times that of the women at 30 76% in 2019 now this to me is a shocking statistic and sort of when i sort of saw the statistic again and again my initial uh, response was one of disbelief after all women's uh, uh, participation in education their access to higher education their access to secondary education is so much more so much it's increased vastly and wherever you go you see girls really doing well get, grabbing all the prizes walking away with it and then we find that the participation ratio in the labor force has decreased so significantly so i feel very strong about this as a woman who has been empowered enjoyed the benefits of a full career i really felt that we need to do something about it mm-hmm. and that is what i feel my career stands for thank you thank you and uh, i think we have uh, the right person with us on our board and uh, who better can you understand the importance of uh, 
creating women leaders in the country and this is i think uh, uh, as a part of the founding team i personally feel it's a great initiative and it's a great start uh, all together so thank you very much for answering that next question uh, what's your message to the young women of this country so our age group is starting from you know let's say uh, 10 plus 2 education so 18 between 18 to 25 So, uh, what's your message to this uh, young women of the country? Um, Anupama, my message to the young women of this country is not let society and your family inhibit you from doing what you want to do and achieve. You become your own biggest enemy or you know hurdle in your achieving your goals and your ambitions. And it is extremely critical, I feel. for women to become financially somewhat independent mm. and i think financial independence creates a more equal gender power and it's very important for women to have that financial independence and i think where i come from and where i have got these feelings from is i'm here now in chennai with my mother she's 94 she's very passionate about a woman being free to pursue her choices of education and career she stopped her studies actually after matriculation you know when she got married mm. at 19 although mm. she would have definitely liked to study more now we are four siblings and she could do any job and you know uh, so that and and all of us were allowed and free to do any pursue any job any subject pursue any of our vocation of our choice and she drilled it into our heads mm. of her all her daughters that women should be financially independent and they should not make the home the be all and end all of their existence mm-hmm. after my father retired and she was a housewife all her life because you know she had four children and after my father retired and they set up home in chennai she started a crash for working women and she strongly felt that such a facility would allow women to continue with their jobs and their careers and she saw the way that we were struggling you know and as a society i feel that part of us should be really training women even to run such uh, you know child care for working women and businesses can also support such activity and maybe that's one of the self employment activities women themselves can undertake mm. so i just feel young women of this country should really do what they want to pursue we they i mean realize their ambitions their aspirations their goals and not let themselves or anything stand in their way beautiful beautiful i think not everyone is privileged to have uh, an idol at home like you had but you know i think that's where mahika comes in and we are here to create that awareness uh, in the minds of these young women with the help of with your help and with the entire team's help we'll try to reach them uh, as much as possible and encourage them to make a, at least a living for themselves which is very important uh and uh, we will wind up this meeting very soon but what's your message what's your encouraging message to the founding team of mahika how do you want, want that i want to just add to my message to the young women uh-huh. uh sure. to sure. say that uh, mahika gives you an opportunity for getting a livelihood and converting your education skills you know your education into employable skills mm-hmm. that's the power of mahika and and into a job of course that depends upon so many other things mm-hmm. but the objectives of mahika is to convert your education into employable skills and then lead you into a placement so i think that is really the value proposition to my mind that mahika brings and therefore to the founders of mahika i strongly feel that uh, don't ever lose sight of your objective as you had explained to me in the beginning so that the less disadvantage the less advantage or the more disadvantage in tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 places get both accessibility to the opportunities that you pro- provide both in terms of the it providing that access and also the affordability hmm. so i think both accessibility and affordability should become the core of your business value proposition and that's my message to the founding team of uh, mahika don't ever lose sight of that that is what attracted me to you madam what's your message to the uh, 
current job industry current industry who is actually facing uh two challenges uh at the same time one is the employability challenge getting the right talent on board is the biggest challenge they are facing and on the other hand uh, the diversity challenge because if you see uh, for example the ites workforce we have barely 30 to 35% women uh, as part of their workforce but they have diversity goals as to reach up to 50% uh, of the workforce so equal men and women so what's your what's your message to the industry how do you how do you see it yeah of course uh, the clear message to industry is that um, you know they have to consciously come forward to mm. enhance the gender ratio in their own uh, you know in their employment but mm. i would say they should look upon this as a huge opportunity you see they have a they will have once they get the loyalty of this workforce they mm. will have a kind of loyalty which only women can do because if you have an understanding employer then mm. women will compromise with their remuneration because they need to manage families all said and done they need to manage their families and their work mm. and they will be extremely you know dedicated hard working focused and also adopt a nurturing approach in their own work environment with their peers mm. you know work better as teams because what they do at home is leading leading a team right. and they are also wise in terms of cost cutting so i think you'll find women have developed so many skills which will be a huge asset to industry and i think they would do well to actually hire more and more women in the industry yeah and data i think data also proves what you just said so they whether it's with reference to sincerity and honesty and also with reference to longevity so they say they stay more than and all that yeah. 18 months more than men in the yeah, organization okay. so i think those are really huge benefits for industry and they should look at it thank you so much madam thank you for your encouraging words and we will definitely remember your words and uh, stick to our purpose all the time thank you thank you very much for your time today